seeing that uh, the globalization as the main platform, not only for investment, but also trade. Uh, speaking of which, trade and investment is actually a nexus. So it is actually uh, uh, dynamically growing under uh, this globalization platform. So uh, to put reverence for uh, today's uh, presentation, I have two or my, of my books. Um, the first one is The Globalization, Productivity and Production Network in ASEAN, published by Paul Grief Macmillan. And then previously also um, uh, my other book uh, that is also um, Coping Trade and Investment, uh, uh, which is entitled Trade and Strat Trade Strategy in East Asia from regionalization to regionalism. So I put that as my main reference for today's presentation. Um, to make it specific and novel, I also put here, as our team suggests, ASEAN, Indonesia, and also Taiwan. Okay, so uh, let me first move from uh, a brief theoretical perspective. Of course, as I said earlier, Trade and investment is a nexus. So you cannot speak trade without investment and you cannot speak investment without trade. So this is actually an interchangeable definition. When I speak trade, uh, it means that I'm speaking also investment, vice versa. The terms of international trade, yeah, of course, uh, 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 along with the investment has increased yeah, that is spurred, that is engine by intermediate goods. So this along, and this is actually the basic and the fundamental, the build, building blocks of the global production network that uh, previous speakers has, uh, has mentioned. And then we have also uh, the distribution yeah, of the global production network is actually uh, covering the globe. That is why I said to you earlier that globalization is the common platform of trade and investment. But of course, when we speak about globalization, globalization it is not um, a neutral word. Yeah? You can have um, uh, positive comments uh, as well as negative comments because there, there, is all, there is always externalities, especially negative externalities. So the debate is how or whether or not we can reap the gain of the economic globalization through the participation in the production network. So this being said that uh, with our team today, how we can actually empower the production network of ASEAN and also the surrounding countries, the ASEAN plus countries. We are, we are speaking not only ASEAN, but we are speaking, uh, of course, uh, with the plus countries. We have China, we have Japan, we have South Korea. Uh, of, of course, we have already uh, signed the RCEP, yeah, plus uh, another country, plus three uh, or four, maybe four countries. Yeah. Uh, we have also um, Australia, New Zealand, India is put on still put on hold. But Taiwan is, is not... Not, not not that that uh, way behind because Taiwan is still uh, a part of the big family of RCEP, I think. Um, of course, and then okay. So if we see the trend, um, this trend of uh, the global production network is actually bringing Asian countries to be uh, more convergence. Yeah, uh, that that that, that uh, 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 compared to to uh, years before. Yeah, so the trend of the global production network is actually very, very good in a sense. But to the other sense, yeah, to the other perspective. So if you have some kind of shock within the global production network, this same pattern is actually having a very high. Uh, is not uh, is. Yeah, it's not always, but this is 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 actually uh, empirically speaking, uh, uh, this trend is posing a very high risk towards uh, unprecedented shocks. Yeah, here we have, for example, in two thousand eight and two thousand nine global financial crisis. Now we have the COVID. This is the major disruptions of the global production network. But I tell you uh, some positive side. Yeah, the fortunate effect of the pandemic later on. 
Um, okay, uh, 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 this is the, the the last of the the, the theoretical overview, of course. Uh, before we move on, the fragmentation theory. So it is actually very beneficial to countries nowadays to switch yeah, from um, uh, 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 one large integrated factory, one large integrated production network into a, a, a more diversified production. So we have the production block, we, are, we have the service links and so on and so forth. So we are creating efficiency yeah, everywhere. Yeah, uh, in the light of the intermediate goods, the intermediate goods itself is actually the one that create this kind of efficiency. Previously, here we have the Ford model. Ford model is uh, just a, a very classical way of to, to, to produce things. Uh, it is named as the Ford model because it's, yeah, we 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 experience this. Uh, this kind of production uh, in the U.S. when they are product, uh, they are producing their own cars and with their own network and so on and so forth. But eventually, this is becoming more and more efficient when they hollow out their factories outside of the border. Now we have Mexico, we have China, and the surrounding areas, especially in Asia, is becoming the major push for the U.S. economic growth because of the service links, because of the production blocks. So this massive spillover effect coming from the northern countries is, is, is actually uh, evolving Asia even more. Now we have Japan, Korea. First, we have in 1960s, the Akamatsu flying geese model, Japan as the leader, uh, and uh, and they uh, and Japan uh, had uh, the second, third, and the fourth tier countries as the like of China, Hong Kong, Taiwan, South Korea, and most of the ASEAN countries. Nowadays, it's not becoming a classical flying geese model, just like the Akamatsu uh, flying geese model suggests earlier, but now it's becoming a more complex geese. It's now uh, the uh, uh, countries that uh, were previously uh, under the second or the third tier countries that well supporting Japan economic growth and production now uh, they have established their own networks we have the Chinese production network we have also here uh, in, in, in in this case we have also the Taiwan production network and so on and so forth so uh, 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 it's becoming more dynamic and complex ASEAN is actually it's actually not being there yet, but we can have those uh, spillover effect eventually if we can manage this global production network, if we can reap the benefit out of it. I'll tell you how later on. Okay, we can skip this. Okay, this is uh, uh, one of the empirical foundations that is taken uh, from my uh, previous research. FTA, yeah, the two uh, two keywords here. FTA first is FTA. Second is the Northeast Asia countries. According to Kawai, so after the Great Financial Crisis in 19, 19, 1998, yeah, the Asian Financial Crisis in nineteen ninety eight, this is well becoming a major disruption, of course, in. Uh, uh, East Asia and also Southeast Asia, because this is the locus of the crisis. This was the locus of the crisis in 1998. So after the Asian financial crisis, there there are um, uh, FTAs and RTAs emerging, yeah, because Asia at that time has experienced and has learned that in order to cope the future economic crisis, they need to bring this region all together. But that is why we have FTAs uh, that is coming throughout uh, this, uh, the, the Asian countries, especially from the eastern part. Coming from the eastern part, China, Japan, and also Korea has, be, uh, has uh, created the so-called spillover effect to ASEAN countries. So um, um, as we might um, know that these three countries maybe along with Taiwan, it has had their own problems in terms of these uh, political, economic, and international uh, cooperation problem. Uh, the so-called trilateral FTA has been discussed since 2002, but RCEP here, which was way 
after uh, the, the discussion of the trilateral FTA. Uh, so this is actually the first discussion, if I'm not mistaken, is in 2011, happened and, 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 and becoming a more concrete uh, strategy towards this uh, region. So the trilateral FTA is, has been discussed before, but it's not um, well established. Why? Because of course, the political and economic factor. So this way, ASEAN, yeah, when it comes to RCEP, we can actually become uh, the common regional platform. Yeah, we, we don't have any issue with China, Japan, okay? We, we, we are actually an open regionalism, an open platform that can actually absorb all of the things. They can absorb and they can cope all of the problems that this Northeast Asian countries they are still encountering uh, until now. So uh, in that case, Taiwan can also experience and can also benefit from the centrality of ASEAN. Okay, speaking of Indonesia, yeah, um, here um, my findings actually suggest that Indonesia is well way behind the regional peers. Yeah, because we, if I put also Vietnam here, Vietnam is also way beyond Indonesia. Why? Because we are lacking. We are lagging behind. Why? Because we have the deindustrialization. Yeah, this, this is happening since the early of 2000. We have also the uh, limited capacity, limited productivity, and so on and so forth. So uh, the idea is to actually leverage even more. We need actually the other countries to pull us out of the deep hole. Okay, so, uh, uh, so this is actually quite slow progress for Indonesia. But fortunately, the pandemic is creating a positive disruption for Indonesia, yeah, the trade war and also the pandemic. Because nowadays, big countries such as the US, such as the European Union, such as Japan, China, and Korea, they're seeking resiliency, not efficiency, but now they are switching to resiliency. In that case, they need to expand their portfolios, their country and regional portfolios. In that sense, Indonesia is actually uh, doing quite well in terms of having that kind of extra spillover that is happening because of the pandemic. But, but this is only the short run uh, effect. So in order to capitalize it even further, we need to actually push forward some of the things that is becoming a Latin problem for Indonesia. Later, I will uh, show you. Okay, um, this is my calculation of the global uh, the global value chain participation by country in all industries. As you can see here, we are actually uh, doing quite well in Indonesia in terms of the forward participation. Of course, we are actually pushing export, but we are quite lagging in terms of this uh, backward participation. Well, uh, um, it, so if I put it into perspective, this is actually very alarming. Why? Because uh, 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 some of the domestic policy in Indonesia is actually constraining the imported or the intermediate goods coming into the, uh, to Indonesia. We have the TKD and we have the local content requirement, which is quite, quite costly for us. Yeah. So, in, uh, so that way, we are actually not uh, reaching our full potential. That way, we are actually uh, uh, becoming uh, or say um, uh, uh, outsider in terms of this global production network. This is Taiwan here, so it's, it's becoming uh, so Taiwan is uh, so so here also ASEAN. But if you um, have a more granular uh, perspective here, if we actually disaggregate the industries in terms of, for example, computers, electronic and ele uh, electrical com uh, equipment, Taiwan is here. Indonesia and ASEAN here. So uh, in that sense, Taiwan is actually becoming the leader of computer, electronic and electrical equipment. So um, in a bilateral relation between ASEAN and Indonesia, also, of course, we, we, are, we are talking about ASEAN here, ASEAN with Taiwan, maybe can minimize this gap. Maybe Taiwan here can bring ASEAN here yeah, because of the 
uh, spill, massive spillover effect and the massive benefits of the cooperation and bilateral cooperation. Okay. Now, if we see the uh, um, where is it? The trend, yeah. Uh, this is the Taiwan ex export, uh, Taiwan export to ASEAN uh, in terms of manufacturing, and and this is the labor intensity, yeah. So in terms, uh, uh, we are doing quite well, ASEAN, in terms of the labor intensive and resource base is uh, now is becoming uh, uh, decreasing over time. So and and and. Uh, to the other way around, we are actually having an extra benefit of high skill and technology intensive production. So in that way, we can say that Taiwan is evolving. Yeah. And then we can also absorb that kind of high tech production from Taiwan. You know, so yeah. um, uh, Taiwan import for ASEAN. So if you see here, the, the imports is actually here. We, we have this um, um, uh, massive um, not massive, but it's actually a very good development in, in terms of medium skill and technology intensive products. We are imported the goods. Yeah. So in that way, yeah, in terms of intermediate goods, Taiwan is slowly becoming our partner in the production network and the productive capacity. Well, our uh, homework is how to switch this to this part, yeah, to high skill or technological intensive because it's steadily de decreasing. Yeah. So um, um, my hypothesis is, is if we can actually push ASEAN and Taiwan uh, bilateral cooperation even further, we can become the second tier, not, it's, 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 it's not, not a problem uh, for us, the second tier countries for the, the global production, uh, the Taiwan's uh, global production network. So um, uh, as well as we hope that this global participation into the Taiwan's production network can bring us also in uh, to establish our own production network in the future. So that has been experienced by uh, se several countries, uh, just like as I, I told you before, China, South Korea, essentially the countries that uh, way uh, they well benefited by the Japanese global production network over the decades. Okay, so. Uh, um, Another perspective. So this is the gravity equation, uh, Poisson pseudo maximum likelihood um, uh, uh, output yeah, from uh, 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 trade determinants yeah, from Taiwan to ASEAN. Here we have the GDP, okay, GDP. Uh, we have also the income the standard yeah, and so on and so forth. We have also the distance. We have also the uh, uh, culture, uh, the common language here, the common language. If you speak Mandarin, uh, we can actually intensify the trade, yeah, uh, both uh, in ex import and export. And what uh, can I? Uh, what, uh, the, the most interesting part is here: political power, yeah, the geopolitical power. So the new southbound policy is geopolitical factor. Pandemic, to the other extent, is also actually the disruptions that is becoming a, a, a global or geopolitical perspective. And this is actually very powerful, positively affected export and also import. So aside from the traditional gravity equation variables, GDP, yeah, there is actually a measurement of size, population, GDP per capita. And uh, aside from also uh, another variable that is actually well representing uh, distance, yeah, geographical distance, for example, we also have non-geographical distance, non-geographical variables, that is actually becoming a major determinant nowadays. Because distance, geographical distance, is no longer an issue. We have now the global convergence. Yeah, if uh, Richard Baldwin say uh, 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 argument about the global convergence, the first, second, and the third unbundling, so the distance between the countries is no longer an issue. So uh, what is becoming the possible and the probable issue is the non-geographical factors, political factors, the cultural issue, the perspective, the geopolitical perspective. So if Taiwan has, has this new south-bound uh, policies, this is actually very important in terms of uh, how to connect ASEAN and also uh, with Taiwan. We, we, we have that, that kind of the building blocks for ASEAN 
and Taiwan bilateral uh, 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 relation in the future. What needs to be done? This is taken from um, uh, my book. So as al already posed by the several, uh, the previous speakers uh, uh, just now, we have for the labor cost. It's becoming a major constraint. That is why we, we, we need the uh, omnibus law. There is, that is why we need the job creation law in terms of to, to match the productive capacity of the labor from the uh, labor side and with the, uh, the, the demand from the investors. We have also uh, the infrastructure problem and so on and so forth. There is actually uh, the one that is uh, uh, our current government uh, currently doing in terms of making extra investment in infrastructure so that it can actually become the major building blocks for uh, future economic cooperation. Because without infrastructure, we cannot have high productivity. Okay, another uh, perspective, yeah, uh, taken from my other paper, paper uh, the FDI determinants, yeah, for Indonesia, for uh, especially, uh, and for the emerging markets. In order, in order to have Taiwanese investment, Chinese investment, the U.S. investment, the Japanese investment, the EU investment, we need to have this patent right protection. With the PRP. This is becoming a major obstacle for us because yeah nowadays the global production network meaning that information is quietly uh, quite uh, uh, I say robustly disseminated so in that way you need a patent protection without it investors will actually divert from um, uh, this this uh, selective region and not to mention we need also to push the human capital as the uh, Chris Manning and the, uh, Rusat suggest in their paper, or in for for example in Indonesia, our productive capacity is quite stagnant. Our productive capacity, our labor productivity is quite stagnant, even compared to other ASEAN countries. Uh, what makes it even worse is what, uh, what I uh, mentioned earlier: labor cost is steadily increasing. The productivity is constant. The cost of labor is increasing so you are becoming more and more expensive uh, and by the way indonesia is now having this kind of limited period of demographic bonus so we need to actually exploit this demographic bonus what we have now with this kind of uh, um, development is quite constraining right away yeah it's not only fdi but we also have the non-equity most. This is the paper that I have been working on with the uh, ASEAN um, uh, Japan Center uh, in Japan, of course. So uh, we need also to diversify our uh, uh, sources of uh, money coming from outside. It's not only FDI. Yeah, Of course, FDI is better, way better than portfolio investment. But we also can have also this non-equity modes of financing, which is surprisingly in the grassroots. When so, this is coming from um, a qualitative assessment from several of the actors um, uh, across industries, and what we learn is they are becoming more and more reluctant to have FDI because this will dilute their, um, what I say, what, uh, what I say, um, uh, influence in their. Uh, respect uh, respected uh, industries yeah but NEM non-equity mode of financing is now becoming an arbitrage for this kind of sector so this is becoming a win-win solution a Pareto optimum and another way yeah in order to push uh, our growth even further we need to innovate we need to have the uh, coming again the productivity yeah, so productivity is becoming a major buzzword. Yeah, coming from all my research and coming from all the experts. Okay, um, to wrap up, yeah, this is a very classical recommendation, of course. Yeah, I must say, yeah, but yeah, although we know uh, all of the uh, recommendation, but it's not there yet. Yeah, so we need the human resource upgrade. Yeah, of course, we need to push this even further, not just as a slogan. 
we need a logistical infrastructure upgrade of course we are still doing it but the yeah uh, some of the infrastructure project is is just uh, not that efficient yeah uh, for example uh, the the uh, bandung uh, high speed train projects this is the 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 the, uh, uh, the planning and the feasibility studies is just bad yeah and then we, we need also to promote trade liberalization of course this is becoming a major buzzword we need to dismantle all kind of protectionism yeah we do, if we protect protect and protect no investors will be coming so we need to dismantle we need to have a more broader perspective we are growing together we are not growing alone but we are growing together and uh, to end this uh, session we need also to improve the business climate of course to increase investment this is the ecosystem that we are talking about the ecosystem is coming from the stakeholders the stakeholders are coming from the four major actors in the quadruple helix ecosystem this is coming from the government this is coming also from the university this is coming also from the community and also um uh, uh, not to uh, not not to mention the, the media and also uh, uh several actors that can merge this growth the, the future growth the future cooperation without um the collaboration across actors the industry the government the university the community or maybe we can call it the uh, pentahelix uh, with the additional uh, actors of the media without collaboration so it is beyond our reach it's beyond our reach it's, we cannot reach it okay but this is easier to say than done I've been uh, uh, discussing with the government um, and I, I know the government, the way they do their job and so on and so forth. Sometimes it's even difficult to manage problem across ministries because the ministries have their own KPI, have their own sectoral ego and so on and so forth. This, this is actually becoming our, our Latin problem. If you cannot if you cannot handle this problem this is becoming a major threat for us indonesia yeah and because indonesia is uh asean yeah it, you cannot actually exclude indonesia from asean without indonesia asean is not asean because our uh, 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 indonesia is now is becoming uh, a dominant player in, in uh, and de facto leader of asean but uh the, the problem that we are posing nowadays is, is becoming and slowly becoming the ASEAN's problem. So we need to tackle our own problem. So uh, to tackle the ASEAN's problem. Yeah. Our aim is to actually uh, expand and actually to reach the uh, minimum target of uh, uh, escaping from the middle income trap. As my uh, book suggests, we can do so if we can push industries if we can push collaboration without it maybe we, we we will we will become old without being rich thank you uh this is 